Hello, good afternoon. Welcome back to Black Book Stacks. I am your host, Hoshonda Sanders, and it is great to see you. Um, it's been a little while. I thought I would do a quick summer reads video, uh, summer part one, because we're not really officially in summer yet, but it's been, I don't know, a couple months maybe, I feel like, since I did a video. Uh, I've been writing and working and uh, taking care of the puppy. So um, let me get started. I got this great copy of Isn't Her Grace Amazing, which is about the women who change gospel music. So beautiful um, by Cheryl Wills. And it came out in May, I want to say, but it has folks in it like uh, Mahalia Jackson, obviously uh, the the OG. Uh, it also has, I think, Mary Mary, um, Davis Sisters. Uh, I think Sissy Houston is in here. Anyway, because I was so obsessed with, oh my gosh, look at this picture of Aretha Franklin. Um, look at that tiger, tiger print. Um, I love it. Uh, I have been in Shine Bright Land, which I read a couple times, and uh, I think I'll link to the Oprah Daily review of it in the description box, um, along with the titles that I'm going to mention, but uh, I've been so um, obsessed, and now we're in June, which is Black Music Month, thinking about Black women in music and the ways that we don't get the credit that we deserve. So. Um, anyway, this is a great addition if that's something that you're interested in. Um, it seems like it has lots of really great gems in it. Speaking of great gems and um, black folks not getting the credit they deserve, I uh, am excited to introduce We Refuse to Forget, A True Story of Black Creeks, American Identity and Power by Caleb Gale. Uh, my understanding is that Caleb wrote an amazing piece for the New York Times Magazine about Tulsa and history. Um, he is from Tulsa, or he was raised there, um, and this essentially is um, the extraordinary story of the Creek Nation, um, which both owned slaves and accepted black people as full citizens. So I think as we approach Juneteenth, this is definitely one to look out for. I had the privilege of being at a wonderful luncheon where he was in conversation with my dear um, idol <laughs> superhero um, friend Jacqueline Woodson um, months ago just in pre-pub mode for this book and um, he's given a lot of thought he did a ton of research um, so many forgotten histories of the relationship of black folks to indigenous and native Americans is um, being recovered here, but also uh, through work that Jackie continues to do and lead. Um, so it's something you should definitely look out for. Um, this book came out actually out a while ago, um, but I, the Plant Queen, You Grow Girl, Christopher Griffin, um, is like life changing, life giving. Um, first of all, I, I have been known to murder a plant or two or four, and um, it is nice to have a visual affirmation of like building the garden as like a form of self care. And I, just, I love the pictures. I love the like education of like how you how you use soil. You know, and especially like during Pride Month, it's great to give a shout out to someone like Plant Queen. She has like 386,000 followers on Instagram, um, you know, plus one because uh, now I'm there. Um, and so anyway, that was a fun one to recover and to look at. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned Under the Skin yet by Linda Villarosa, but um, this is about basically the hidden toll of racism on America, American lives, the health of our nation, and basically, um, while I think most health equity reporting tends to emphasize that the health disparities that impact people of color 
mostly impact those people, it actually is bad for everybody when um, we don't get the help that we need because of structural racism. So it's a phenomenal book, phenomenally reported. Linda Villarosa is an OG uh, in reporting, a pioneer, a pioneering advocate um, for health equity and closing health disparities. This is brilliant, brilliant work. Um, so you should certainly check it out, especially if you're interested in um, potential solutions to health disparities and those gaps. Uh, I don't even know if I mentioned that the For Color Girls Who Consider Suicide When the Rainbow is Enough by one of my favorite poets and writers ever, Ntozake Shange, was reissued um, in conjunction with the Broadway play. But if I haven't, this is just an excuse to mention it again, because look at this cover and this beauty. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, it came out again in April. It has some um, photographs from, um, photographs of Ntozake, she who brings her own things. Um, and also uh, pictures from like the original production. This would have been 1976. June 11th, 1976. Look at that. Wow. Long time ago. All right. Just a few more. Um, so, Miss Chloe, A Literary Friendship with Toni Morrison, um, is by A.J. Verdell. And uh, I love this cover. I love this book. Uh, it inspired me actually to start revising more by hand including the book that I'm working on now which let me tell you is not a crystal stare it makes me feel a little bit insane and at the same time like the quality of the writing is so different than when I try to revise just on like a regular doc so anyway um, I love this quote on the back. If you let a black girl loose in a library, you may not recognize the woman who emerges. So I went through this book and like underlined and highlighted and just felt really close to both A.J. Verdell and um, Toni Morrison. Um, lots of wisdom in there about boundary setting, about um, prioritizing one's work, about how to engage with someone who is well known so that you're not like fangirling but you also are paying them the reverence that they deserve which is why it, this is titled Miss Chloe and not Miss Tony um, for example um, but yeah definitely worth a read especially um, I think there may also just be a dearth of books about black women friendship and black women literary friendship in particular like I think does it really it's not really a thing it's interesting to think about um, I started reading his name is George Floyd which is um, the subtitle is one man's life and the struggle for racial justice um, I think it's an important book Robert Samuels and Toulouse Olorunipa I definitely said that wrong but here's the title. Um, it came out May 17th. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just a very compelling narrative about George Floyd's background, um, his context, um, you know, his life in Houston, the fact that he was detained more than 20 times over the course of his life. Um, and I guess it's based in or inspired by original reporting from the award-winning Washington Post series, George Floyd's America. So I think maybe because, you know, the anniversary of this, the second year anniversary has come and gone, we are now sort of past and beyond thinking about his name as much as it seems like we were earlier in the pandemic, um, certainly in 2020, right? Like 2021, it was like, you know, the silence was a little deafening and, and now we're into 2022 and it's almost like that summer never happened. Um, so 
yeah I mean I guess I felt by not really reading it or prioritizing it that I was complicit in that same silence and at the same time uh, I still think it's an important work for the historical record um, and didn't want to not mention it uh, the same thing is true for Ada Limon's The Hurting Kinds. Um, I love her as a poet. They're building a condo across the street. I know you can hear uh, that drill, which is like my favorite, especially when I decide to, to actually film something for the first time in a long time. But anyway, so uh, yes, I loved these poems um, as much as the carrying and, and also just um, have been thinking about how much poems and poetry really help us to distill our experience and make sense of it and in some cases heal from it but that's what i have for may and june um releases that i recommend for the channel um i'd be curious to hear what you've been reading what you've been thinking about especially as Juneteenth arrives um, and thanks so much for your like shares subscribes I appreciate the donations that I've gotten to help uh, contribute to the work I do on the channel and yeah I won't make any promise about when you see me again but um, I, I do hope to, to see you before summer is over um, after I finish my manuscripts um, Please send me all the good vibes that you can and I will see you again soon. Thanks so much.